Six months ago, we had Juicy Garland on the show to talk about an incident that happened at one of her drag story hours. Well, it's happened again, and we want to talk to her about it. Juicy, come on in. Thank you for having me. Oh, Juicy, you know, I I love talking to you, but I don't like talking to you under these conditions. So tell us what happened uh, two weeks ago. Yes. So I was back at Teetotaler for another story hour. Uh, I showed up at about uh, 10 o'clock with my face on, but my clothes, well, not off, but in my street clothes. And uh, I get ready the rest of the way there. They put up a privacy screen for me and I went downstairs fully ready. Uh, to check out the space, to set up my books. It was Father's Day, so our theme was family. And there was actually a new family who had showed up, an adult family, uh, this uh, older woman with her two adult kids. They had actually just moved to New Hampshire from the Bay Area. Uh, the younger son was actually just matriculating to Dartmouth College to study genetics. And the older sister was actually just going to start working to do genetics research at Dartmouth College. And um, I have a science background, so we had a lot to talk about. And this was at about like 10 45 10 40 and uh as we were talking this group of maybe about 20 or so nazis in like uniform khaki cargo pants the gall of them to wear cargos and then matching t-shirts with little nazi symbols on the chest and matching hats and masks um came up to the floor to ceiling windows and they started shouting obscenities and chanting Maybe. things and banging Juicy, on the windows. Juicy, we've got a video. Let's roll it. Yes. Michael. Oh. Oh, yeah. Yeah. What were they shouting? I couldn't understand that. Uh, get off our streets was what they were shouting then. <laughs> um, yeah. So obviously that was where I was sitting and the family of three sort of booked it to the front of the cafe. The second they came, because obviously they were uncomfortable. Yeah. Um, as soon as they started to Zeke Kyle with their little hand signals, um, I <sighs> wanted to capture that moment to make sure that other people could see. Uh, we had had protesters, as you well know, uh, before yes. back in November and since, but those folks were quieter, uh, less obstructive, and frankly, lazy. Um, those folks uh, we could handle and weren't so worried about. And um, there's a group of local folks who help us out called the Peacekeepers who uh, were doing other pride events that day, so they weren't around to help. And uh, unannounced, these guys showed up and were considerably more dangerous. Yeah. Um, luckily, the police did show up a little bit after that. Um, immediately after I took that video, I met with the manager of the cafe, who's a wonderful guy, smart guy. Uh, we assessed the situation to make sure we could keep the kids, particularly, and the families safe. And we realized we could. We modified the event to put them in a different part of the cafe, away from the windows, so we could make sure the kids could be comfortable and the parents could feel at ease. We checked with the parents who were at that point showing up, and they still wanted to participate. Yeah. So we carried on with the event. Um, I was basically a decoy in that space, made sure to keep the attention of the Nazis until the police came. The police did and then moved them to the street side uh, uh, um, walkway. Uh, once they were away from the windows, I went upstairs and I held the event still. I was able to get through the like eight or nine books that I chose. I'd curated them to really tell stories to kids about uh, kids' experiences with family. Um, I had uh, like Heather has two mommy is a classic, right? That's what I started with. It was a little joke to myself. Um, I had uh, a story by Jamie Lee Curtis, who has an adoptive daughter. And it was about this adoptive daughter who wanted to hear the story again about the night she was born. And there was a story about this Dominican kid whose brother was going away to the military. And to keep him home, this kid painted a picture of the world because that's what his brother wanted to see. And it was all sorts of different stories for different kids from different families. 
Um, and it, it wasn't easy to get through. It was a tough job juggling, like keeping the parents comfortable, right? We could hear these chants outside um, and making sure the kids were safe and oblivious. And I was able to do it, but it was tough. Was, were there any repercussions to those people? So, so far, no. Um, but I do believe that there is an investigation ongoing. Um, the These folks who came to disrupt the event, I think, may have crossed some lines. Uh, so I'm hopeful that action will be taken, but it's not up to me. So we'll see what happens. I mean, they had masks on. How brave. You know, they, right? wouldn't, wear, they wouldn't wear masks three years ago, yeah, but, yeah. but now, now they'll put one on. Yeah, clearly and, they and, don't exactly have conviction in their beliefs and no. wanted to hide their identities. And, and, and who coordinates their outfits? I wonder, I wonder who well, does someone that. without taste. Um, <laughs> but clearly, uh, unlike prior protesters, these, these guys were organized. They, oh, had, they, they knew the chance. They knew yeah. the chance. Yeah, they were clearly <laughs> practiced. They, ha they had ordered T-shirts with the same symbols. They had planned this um and that that's the troubling thing is that unlike the prior lazy protesters who really weren't coordinated much um th these have a these guys have a plan of action and we have to really take precautions and luckily the cafe is and will and these families who want to attend will be safe and we will keep going where else do you perform in the area other than the cafe yeah, so um, actually, a couple other libraries have reached out to me, so I will let them handle announcements to keep their safety, right? Mm -hmm. um, I'm actually, on July 8th, performing at Club Cafe in Boston with the Sisters of Perpetual Indulgence. Oh, wow. We are doing uh, Dungeons and uh, uh, Drag Nuns, so we're doing a live D&D &D event for charity to help uh, support uh, unsupported youth in New England and the Boston area. Um, and that's what I have planned right now live. I also do a bunch of streams on Twitch. You can always follow me on Twitter or Instagram. I post stuff all the time. So yeah, just, uh, I, I keep posting stuff and you can find me. Juicy, what's your day job? Uh, so I don't really talk about that much to keep okay. that protected, but, um, ultimately I, I work in the sciences and I actually work in quality and regulatory in medical devices. So I keep people honest and keep patients safe. Well, thank you for all you do during the day and during the night as well. Thank you, Juicy, for coming thank back you. to talk to us. Absolutely. What a fighter, what a good person. Thank you, Juicy.